everyone and welcome back to my art channel. So today I am going to show you how to paint a red pepper and this was a request I got from a viewer so let's get started. The colors I'm going to be using today are white of course you can use titanium white or whatever white you have. Cadmium red light. Cadmium yellow light you can use any light bright yellow you have. Transparent red oxide you can also use burnt sienna if you want. Ultramarine blue, black, and then as a supplemental color, I put out pyrrol red, which is a little bit more of a neutral red than the cadmium is, because the cadmium is kind of orange, but we'll use both reds. So uh, whatever you have on hand for that is fine. So I've got a little piece of canvas here that I toned with some raw umber. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in the shadows. And so we'll start with a little of the transparent red oxide and some of the pyrrole red. And get a little mixture going there. Put some medium in this. And you could even darken that with a little bit of black if you need to. So that's, yeah, that looks a little better there. Okay. So we'll just lightly sort of mass in the pepper here and then Okay, so then we're going to have some shadows here So usually the best way, as I've said before, to paint any object in light is to always put the shadows in first. And put those in kind of translucent, a little thinner. Now the key to painting any kind of orangey red object like a bell pepper or even a tomato is red has a tendency, it's a very odd psychological thing, but most other colors, you can just lighten them with white. I'll put in a little bit of a cast shadow there. You can just lighten them with white and they'll look okay. You know, you add white to blue, it looks like light blue. You add white to orange, it looks like light orange. You add white to green, it looks like light green. But red doesn't work that way. You add white to red and you get pink, which psychologically, for whatever reason, we tend to perceive as a different color. So the key to painting a red object successfully excuse me, successfully, <laughs> is when you get to the light areas, you can't just add white, you've also got to add yellow to keep it warmer in the light so that it's going to start moving toward orangey in the light areas. So uh, a good sort of mass tone for our pet board will be a mixture of this cadmium red light and pyrrole red. Now this is a pretty intense mixture so we'll just use a little bit of this right on the edges as it rolls into shadow. So, right here. So this is just a mixture of like I said the pyrrole red and the cadmium red light. So, and then if you're going to start lighting, lightening it, because see, let me show you, if you just add white, 
to this. You're gonna get pink. And I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it just doesn't look quite natural. It looks too rosy pink, and a pepper and light is not that color. So then you're gonna add a little white to it, or a little yellow to it. Sorry, I can't talk today. A little yellow to it and make it kind of orangey. So by adding that yellow and that warmth to it, it's gonna keep it looking more right for the way red looks in light so it doesn't go too pink on you and then you can just put in the light area You can always darken with the transparent oxide red or if you're using burnt sienna you can use that too. probably should have done is put in a little bit of a background color. So why don't I do that? Why don't I put in just a little bit of background. Make that a little brown and then we'll mix in some blue to that to gray it down. better. That gives it some context. some of these darker areas Let's model the form a little bit and then you said in the lightest of lights you can put in some more yellow with that Highlight. You can go in a little. Sometimes with highlights like this, it's it's almost better to make the highlight the complementary color. So you can just put the just ever so little tiniest little touch of blue in there. Not too much. You still want it to be mostly white. But if you do that. It'll kind of make the highlight look a little more natural. So it's here and then here. You can sort of blend that in a little around it.
And sometimes red peppers will, and green peppers too, will have sort of this waxy highlight on it. I don't know if you can see. So you can take some white and it's actually, it's actually good. I got a little red in there because I was going to make this a little violet-y. And then add just a little touch of black to make it a sort of grayish. You want this to be even a little blue. You want this, oh, darn, I put too much blue in there. There you go, okay. You definitely want this to be darker than the highlight. So, okay, there, that's good. So that's kind of a, a slightly violety gray. With just a little bit of that, you can kind of brush these over some of the, if you can see in the picture there, some of that reflected light is. Very, very lightly. It kind of has that little bit of a waxy bloom to it. So, but that should never be as light as the highlight. And then we can go in and mix a little yellow and blue to make the stem. Yellow with that, with some white to lighten it up. Put the highlight in. a little black into the green here. It's chromatic black from Gamblin. You can use ivory black if you want. Just put in a little bit more of a shadow side on that stem. See. So anyway, so that gives you some basic color mixtures of how to paint a red bell pepper. Uh, you could also apply this to tomatoes as well. Remember the shadow areas are red mixed with a little black and burnt sienna or transparent oxide red. And then when you move into the lighter red areas, don't forget add both white and yellow to push the reds toward the warmer orangey side and that will keep your reds from getting too pink and looking funny uh, when you're painting something that is in this color range. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and that it was helpful to you, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time.